Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, I hope you've been following my uh, AI and machine learning related uh, videos. And recently when I was doing one about the Llama.cpp project, I noticed that the project could be built not using a standard C compiler like uh, the GNU C compiler, GCC or Clang, but it could be built using the Zig programming language, but yet Llama.cpp is written in CPP, G uh, C++. So I thought to myself, now I've heard of Zig and I, I remember going to the homepage and reading a little bit about it a couple of times. So what Zig is, is a new programming language that's all very interesting and I can cover it more in other videos. If you think you'd like to know more, please tell me in the comments below. But the major thing for me is that it can be used as a drop-in C compiler replacement. So it can replace CCC, it can replace CLang just as a drop-in replacement and cross-platform. So Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. So that's a pretty important uh, tool that we could have at our fingertips. Not only that, it can produce, to do cross-compiling, it can produce targets code for other platforms, not the platforms on, without installing any more stuff without installing any more compilers without installing any more libraries it can do that from the get-go so in this video i want to look at zig but not from as a zig as a language but zig as a drop-in replacement c compiler so if you want to find out more please let me explain Okay, so the first thing you need to do is get hold of a copy of the Zig language. So you go to ziglang.org. Now you can install it from a package manager, but the best way to install it is this portable version that literally just unpacks into a folder. And as long as you set your path into that folder, then you're up and running. So that makes it really, really easy. No dependencies, just unpack it into that folder. So here you can see there's Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Linux for x86, Linux for x86, for, for ARM, for RISC, for power. So, you know, there's lots and lots of different versions here. So I'm gonna be using the Linux x86 version. So you need to download that file. It's just a tar.xz file. So basically a compressed tar file. You download that onto your machine. Okay, so I have that downloaded now onto this machine. So there we can see the 43 megabytes file. You need to unpack that using tar minus XVF and then Zig Linux and then that file. And that will create a folder with this name in it. Uh, Zig Linux, da, 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 all the way up to there. So there'll be a huge folder. And then what we do is just rename that to Zig because that's gonna change every time there's a new version. There's gonna be a different number. Just rename that to Zig. And then the final thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you set the path. So I have a little uh, shell script here which says export path and then I also want zig to be in that. Now you can set this permanently in one of your startup files, your bash rc file or whatever you're using. You can do that or you can just run that every time you want to use zig. So once you've got it set on the path, that means if you then type zig, for example, version, then it will actually show you it can find the Zig executable and it can show you which version it's got running. And that's it, you've now got Zig installed on your system. Pretty simple, because it's just a folder. It's just this folder that you unpack. Now, let's dive into what you can actually do with it. So as I said in this video, I'm gonna be looking at how you can use it as a drop-in replacement for GCC or for CLang. So I've got a folder here, source and then Zig and then C examples, because this is what we're doing. We're looking at how you can use C from within inside of Zig. So first of all, we'll go into my hello w folder. And of course, what we've got in here, we've got hello w.c, a very, very simple C program that just prints out hello world. You've seen this, you know, a thousand times uh, in your life. So what I do now is compile this, not using GCC or using Clang from LLVM, or I compile it using Zig. So what you do is this, you just say Zig CC hello w dot C. So you're saying to Zig, I want you to act as a drop in C compiler. And it will do that and it will go ahead and just compile it. And there you go, it's done it. So if we now look at a dot out, because of course that's the standard thing for things, we've now got a executable which we can run, okay, and you get hello world. Now, of course, a better way to run it would be to do the standard kind of sit flag. So you do minus O, hello W, that's the name of the binary we want, and then hello W.C. So now we get a file called hello W, which we can run, and that gives you hello world. So again, really, really simple. 
you just get the, uh, the, the flags exactly as you would with a standard C compiler, but I'm not using GCC, I'm not using uh, uh, CLang, I'm just running that zig binary that's in that folder that I've just unpacked. So I've got a whole C compiler here at my fingertips just by uh, extracting a zip file or a tar file into a folder. That's great, but it gets even better than this. Now this is gonna uh, blow your mind a little bit. What happens if I wanted here, I am on, if I do a U name, minus A, okay, here I am on an x86 desktop, okay? So I'm on an Intel, actually it's an AMD processor, okay, 64-bit uh, running Linux here. Now, what happens if I wanted to compile something for my Raspberry Pi? How would I do that from here? Well, it is so simple. What I need to do is do zig, cc again, because that's what I'm doing, minus O, let's call it, Hello W A Arch. It's, it's, it's ARM64. Okay, and of course it's the Hello uh, World. Oh, if I could type Hello World.c program. But then at the end now I add target and then I say A Arch 64 Linux GNU. And there are a whole bunch of targets. You can look them up uh, on their website. And in fact, there's a way of printing out the targets from within Zig itself, but it's a big long uh, list because you saw it supports Powers PC and Risk Five and Intel and, and ARM and everything. But so there you go. This is the uh, so I want it for Linux and I want it for the ARM version. Okay, there you go. It's compiled. That if I now do a file of that um, of that of that thing, you can see it says yes, this is a 64-bit, but 64-bit what ARM. 64 version. It's not an x86 version. So now here on my x86 machine, I've cross compiled. I haven't downloaded the the cross compiler GCC. I haven't added in like five different versions of GCC to try with. I've just done it all with inside Zig in that folder that I unpacked. This is this is so cool. This is so easy now to do cross compilation. Now I can copy that file over to my Raspberry Pi and let's run it over there. Okay, so here I am on my Raspberry Pi. Okay, there we go. Uh, AR64 bit version of uh, Linux, and I've got that file now, hello uh, WAR64, and that's that same file, and we can just run it. So there you go, hello world. So on a Raspberry Pi, I've now got a, a program running in ARM, 64-bit ARM, that I compiled over on my x86 without installing cross compilers, without installing loads of complicated stuff to make sure I've got the right libraries and the right compilers and the right versions. It just did it all with inside Zig. Boom, brilliant. Do you know what, you can actually compile a Windows console app doing exactly the same thing with inside Linux. So, you know, this is just brilliant. Let's do it again, minus O. And let's call it hello.exe because we're going over to the Windows world. Okay. And it's hello.c uh, is what we're, hello.w.c is what we're compiling. Hello.w.exe. Okay. And now we're going to say target. And what's the target going to be? It's going to be x86.64. Windows GNU because it ships the G uh, GNU li uh, lib GNU runtime library uh, with it, so it's all there. And now I can go ahead uh, and build that, and it's going to there you go. So if I now do a file of hello w.exe, there you go. It says it's a console program for for Windows x86 64 bit for Windows. So of course here on uh, because I'm on actually I'm actually using uh, WSL Windows Subsystem. I can copy that now from uh, here over to uh, you do it like this mount C users Gary and then I've got a, a temp directory. Let's copy it over to there. Now here I am over on a PowerShell and I can do a dir of dot exe. There you go. Hello world dot exe. Well, let's run it. Let's run hello world.exe. Hello world. So I've literally just created a version for Windows. I ran a version, of course, for Linux, because that was the first one I compiled. And I've compiled a version for ARM for my Raspberry Pi on Linux. So Windows and Linux, I could do the same for Mac OS. It will all just work. And I've got it running all just by unpacking that folder. And then that was it. It's, I've got this cross compiler. Absolutely brilliant. But of course, it's not just a C compiler. It's also a C++ compiler. So here I've got uh, hello w.cpp standard program there you go hello world same thing again uh, but using a kind of all the uh, c++ uh, constructs and i can compile that exactly the same so i can do a zig c++ minus o hello w let's call that dot cpp uh, and then uh, underbar cpp and then hello w.cpp as the program 
it's now going to use a C++ compiler that I've got. And again, here we go, we can just run it now. Uh, and there you go, hello world. Notice it hasn't got a comma in that one because that's how this program's written. Okay, hello world from C++. So <laughs> I've just, just got this cross compiling, cross language compiler C, C++ just by unpacking the zig folder. And here I am just running it, no problem at all. Ah, but you might say, what happens if you wanted to use the muscle C runtime library rather than the GNU C runtime library? No problem at all. We can do that as well. So all you need to do is do zig cc hello w and we'll call it the muscle version. For those who don't know, muscle is a, a replacement or an alternative C runtime library. Okay, and we'll now say target is, is x86 64 Linux and what we're looking for the muscle version the typo there minus O for the output okay so this is going to compile a version uh, that's not for uh, glibc but using muscle and again we can do file now of hello w muscle and what does it tell me it's statically linked because we're not using the glibc version We've got a statically linked version now with a uh, muscle uh, installed in it and of course it just runs as you'd expect hello world so look at this if you want to try a different c runtime now i wonder if this will work with muscle rather than with gnu uh, c runtime now. yes try that out i want to compile this for raspberry yes try that i want to compile this for windows yes i want to compile it for mac OS. yes just do it all from one place here inside of uh, the zeek folder Brilliant. Now you might be thinking, oh, it's all very well compiling a Hello World program. Will it compile more? Absolutely, it will. Just give you a quick demo. If I now go into my thread test tool, a program that's on my GitHub library, a program I've used many times here on my uh, channel for different types of testing. If we just have a look at the C file at the top here, I give a list on how you should compile it. There you go, GCC. What you do is copy that, okay, but not the G part but just the, from the CC, because why we're going to do zig CC. It's going to have to include P threads because this is a multi threading library. I want the output to be the thread test tool and I want to compile that code. There we go, it's done. So again, we can just do a file of thread test tool and there it shows me it's running and, and it just runs, of course. Of course it does um, 22,000, creates 20 threads, does it very quickly, there you go. And that's it, it works. So it will compile complicated products. I've seen examples of where people just replace zig cc rather than gcc in a make file and it will compile fairly sophisticated projects because it's basically it's using clang for this part of the project so it knows how to compile just about uh, anything so there you go now what i'd like to do is show you how you can use zig rather than having to download visual studio code or having to download uh, one of the linux uh, tools for windows so you can get yourself a, a copy of the gcc compiler so first of all i've got vs code the setup executable here. So you just go ahead and you install that. This is a basically a fairly new install of uh, Windows 11. So I'm just showing if you were going the first time to uh, add you know, a C compiler, a little development environment you wanted to try out and you think, oh, I could download Visual Studio Code that's 2.2 gigabytes or 4.4 gigabytes or whatever it is. Well, actually VS Code is very, very popular cross-platform i could use that but i need a c compiler what c compiler can i use well let's use zig let's uh, let this install okay so here we are inside of visual studio code now let's say i'm going to create a new file and we're going to call it uh, hello w.c you know as we've been doing where do i want to save it so let's create a new folder called source and we'll just save it in there hello w.c to be sure Okay, so there we've got hello w.c and we want our, uh, do you want to recommend a C, C++ inspection? Yeah, go ahead and install that while I'm, uh, while that's happening there. So we want to put in our hello world program. Okay, so there's our hello world program. We can save that. Now what I want to do is I want to compile it. So let's open up a terminal here and uh, I'm going to say, right, I want to compile that. Oh, but I can't. CC, no. No C compiler, it's not going to work. That's a GCC. No, I can't compile that. What do I do? Let's get hold of Zig and that will fix the problem for me. So here we are. Here's all the different ones. What do we want? Windows with uh, x86 and it's a zip file. Yep, let's go with that. Let's download that file. Now, once that's downloaded, we go over, open up the folder here and we can extract that by just double clicking on it. Extract all. 
where do I want to put it now? I don't want to put it in the download, so I'm just going to put it in my Gary directory, and we're going to call it Zig, as I said before. We want it to be called uh, Zig. Okay, so once that's extracted, what we're actually going to do is we've still got this very long name, as I was saying earlier. So we're going to go into here and just need to take everything. Control X for cut, go back up to Zig here, Control V, and that will put it all into there. And in fact, we can now get rid of that folder. Okay, so now there is Zig on our system. We just need to set the path and then we have access to it. Now here in the instructions on the Ziglang website, it tells us that if we run this command here from within inside a PowerShell, it'll set the right path. We'll have to edit it in a second. So what we do is we go over to our PowerShell here, we paste that, but we want to change this to be C colon uh, users Gary Zig. That's what we want, that's where I've put it. And then we hit OK to run that. And now it says you have to restart your terminal. So let's just make sure uh, we can do that. You may, in fact, you may find you have to restart Visual Studio Code completely. And if we type zig, uh, it just runs zig version gives us. So now we have access to our C compiler. So let's go into that source directory that I created. And there is my hello world program. And so just like before, zig cc minus o hello w.exe because we're now on Windows, uh, hello w.c. That will go ahead and compile it. Okay, so now I have. Uh, there you go, hello w.exe, hello world. So this is brilliant because I've now got Visual Studio Code and a C compiler and a C++ compiler. And in fact, a C++ and C compiler that's, that can do cross compiling all just here inside of Visual Studio Code without me having to go and download Visual Studio and all that kind of stuff. So a great way of getting a C compiler on Windows if you're just starting with C, you wanna get some simple C programs written. Well, there's a quick way to do it. Okay, so there you go, an easy way to get a C compiler, uh, just unpack a folder, whether it's Windows, whether it's Linux, whether it's Mac OS, you've got it there, and you've got this cross compiling ability as well, C and C++, pretty interesting. Now, if you'd like to know more about the Zig language, do let me know in the comments below, and I'll see if we can knock together some tutorials for that as well. Okay, that's it, my name's Gary Sims, this is Gary Explains. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, well, I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.